from linebacker here, like, um, and, and offset for, I just want to say that I have to uh, scoot off for a few minutes. So I might miss the answers to your questions, Minister. So my apologies, but I will listen back to them. Um, first off, I want to congratulate you on your on your work, and it shows that the, you know the importance that this government has had had has had on um, on special education when we when we have a minister dedicated to that. And my, my few questions would be. Um, specific and, and, and general, but the first one would be with regard to the early intervention classes, and it was really good to hear your cl your clarity on, on that with um, with Deputy Cairns. But I've come up with a situation, and you, you are you are probably are aware of it, of a, of a fantastic school, uh, St. Column Kills in, in, in Tor County Lowes, where they have an incredible principal with an incredible um, commitment to early intervention classes. Um, and they have I suppose almost a victim of their own success, and now there is you know children who leave the early intervention classes and go into their mainstream classes, but because of the matriculation of how the NESC um, derive SNA places, those children who are in need of the of, of extra SNAs don't get it in the mainstream classes. Whereas if they had to re remain in special classes. Um, they would they would have got um, more SNA, and I and I know that would be a you know there is a, a, an argument to say that we should be reducing SNAs as the need reduces, but for me it would be to make sure the SNA is there to make sure that that child reaches their best potential and to have extra allocation for an SNA in a mainstream class, um, child specific rather than class specific, um, it might be um, a, a way to review how we are allocating our um, SNAs to those mainstream classes for children who are who are um, really succeeding at um, the early in, or in the early intervention classes. My second question would be regarding to um, lessons that would be learned throughout COVID. And, you know, we all have lessons we have we, we, we need to learn. But I suppose my question would be to you, Minister, would be has the, the work and the research been um, that, that is been ongoing and we, I suppose we won't see the consequences of COVID for another couple of years on our special needs children. But has there been any um, thought given to the uh, to making special education an essential service that actually um, that the, the, these classes would not shut down? That you know that that disability um, services are essential, and that we wouldn't be have that it, it, for the fear that we have another pandemic or another crisis that these children wouldn't fall off the edge and they would have a, a, a continuation of service. Um, and also, my, my last question would be um, regarding uh, SNAs and the fantastic course and the work that they do. I suppose my question would be um, on, that, on that course in UCD, and will it be accredited, Minister? Because we do we do have a huge respect for SNAs, and we know in this this um, this committee that the important work that the SNAs do because they, you know, keep our inclusive education system going. And without SNAs, they wouldn't be there. And their their multidisciplinary role um, in our schools is absolutely integral. So I wanted to ask, you know, what is being done on accrediting that course to acknowledging um, on the on the list of uh, on the levels of accreditation? Will they will that course be accredited and, and awarded to those people who are are doing it? And sorry, Minister, my final question, the fourth class question, would be: You mentioned that you know our our special classes, our ASD units, are dedicated to um, autism. Um, my question would be: How do we encourage um, or help? A family who doesn't have an autism diagnosis, who don't fit into these ASD units, but yet do absolutely need a special classes. And I do know um, a particular family who are, you know, struggling to find a special kind of multidisciplinary special needs classes or a special class, um, and they're not getting into schools because they don't have an autism diagnosis. And how do advice for me as a, as a public rep and advice for parents, how do we organise or help schools 
establish these multidisciplinary. I'm not sure of the proper title of these classes, um, uh, but how do we do? How do we encourage and help that? Thank you. Thanks. Um um, thank you, Senator. Um, and you have a number of, of, of different queries there. Just first of all, around St. Cunkill's uh, National School, um, you may be aware of the fact that I did meet with the school and with the principal outside the door. Um, the school has four um, classes, uh, especially early intervention classes, um, and, and they do want more SNAs. They've made that clear um, privately and, and publicly. Um, I met them there, it was February the 16th, I think, and I know that they're having a meeting with the National Council for Special Education this week um, at my request, and um, <clears throat> the, obviously the NCSE has, has responsibility for allocations, not the department, uh, but they obviously are aware of my interest in it, um, and they'll certainly, hopefully, um, it'll be fruitful after um, after that, that meeting. Um, just, just around... Um, COVID and, and the, the closure of, of the special schools and special classes. Uh, the public health advice uh, at the time was on, on the numbers moving in, in the systems um, or in the system to close schools. Um, and there was obviously a priority reopening uh, for special schools and special classes. So they opened first in the summer of 2020 um, and then they reopened first as well in February 2021. But you're absolutely right. Um, it's something that I absolutely don't want to see happen again. And uh, that you know, because special schools and special classes, and indeed children with special edu uh, special education needs in mainstream, you know, it is an essential service. Um, and you know, I did all I could to ensure. Um, I just want to reassure you of that from a personal capacity to keep special schools and special classes open. Uh, but it wasn't to be. Um, much to my regret, even though that we did get them reopened first, I really don't want that to happen again if, if God forbid, there is another pandemic or there is another reason. So that research uh, is, is going to be critical in terms of planning for that. It is still an essential service. Um, we said that repeatedly, uh, you know, how we need to look at and make sure that even though it is an essential service, that it can stay open as an essential service. Uh, the next time. So uh, I, I take that point on board um, and it's something that uh, I'm very aware of uh, for the future. Um, also just around SNA accreditation, um, that's that's obviously something that um, SNAs have been looking for for, for, for a, a period of time. Um, you know, I think it's important to say that their qualification doesn't take away from the calibre of SNA at the moment, and a lot of them actually um, are more qualified than they even needed to be to, to become an SNA in the first instance. Um, but there is um, uh, a minimum qualification raised with the Workplace uh, Relations Commission around this, and um, the department is open to reviewing the position. I think it's important to say that. Um, and I think once we have a review of the outcomes of this training program, part of that review, we look at SNA accreditation um, and uh, to see, you know, and also through the, the, the SNA contract, you know, the National um, Building Momentum Pay Agreement, it can be looked at in that context as well. The SNAs, like children with additional needs, just would not be able to function in, in any proper way, um, uh, you know, w without the help of their SNA. So they're absolutely critical for their support and they have developed each child uh, a very special relationship with their SNA. They do an awful lot of work, whether it's intimate care needs or yard work or homework or assistive technology or taking, you know, helping with breaks. So many different um, so many different, uh, you know, roles they have in one. So uh, we, we do take that very seriously um, and we will be looking at that into the future as well. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I think that's um, everything. Pat, do you want... Please, Chair. Sorry, yeah. okay. was just, just one... Oh, sorry, yes. Minister. Sorry, Aaron, yeah. Just on the advice for, for a parent with children who have additional needs and are in need yes. of special class... Um, but they don't have the autism diagnosis. Yes. And I know there isn't a, a specific, I, um, forgive me, I don't know the name of the, the type of class, but how do we encourage that movement for schools? Um, and is there is there a, pro a, a simple process to open up those multidisciplinary uh, special classes? Yeah, I'm, they are in existence. I mean, I mean you know, the majority of classes are for children uh, with autism, but but 
an awful lot of them aren't as well. So that the, the most important thing for that particular instance that you mentioned is for them to talk directly with the CINO, uh, the special needs, uh, needs organiser, because she will know where there are special classes available um, that are perhaps not all um, with, with children with autism. It's probably the best okay. Okay. thing to do. 